it's a pity he's injured this year and he's, he's unable to, to play. But uh, if you watched him operate around the club whilst he hasn't been playing, you would understand why you were so keen to get him to sign on. He brings a lot of, besides being a terrific footballer, he brings a lot of spirit and a lot of leadership to our club. And um, you know the fact that he's committed to us, it, it really pleases us. And it's probably a good sign that we're on the right track as well. Does it say a lot that you come to him for one more year and he says we won't make it through? But say about the culture that you've built here at the club? Um, well, it's not I that have built it, it's been all of us that have built it. So, uh, um, yeah, I think together we've, we've built a, a, a good club, a place where players want to play, where staff want to work, and, and um, um, Cam's re signing is a, a reflection of that. His rehab seems to be going well, he seems pretty keen to <laughs> speed it along. How do you? <laughs> yeah, if you ask, he, he'll tell you how good it's going. But look, the thing about it is he's looked after himself particularly well. There's always a bit of a worry when you when you can't run much and you, you've got to do alternative forms of exercise to to stay fit that you can actually put a little bit of weight on during that time. And Cam's managed not to do that. He's, he's, and he doesn't find that easy, I know. He's looked after himself particularly well and he looks good running around at the moment. So, um, look, he'll be trying to give himself every chance to get back by the end of the year, but he'd have to defy all the laws of medicine and everything like that to do it. So uh, we'll look after him and make sure that when he comes back, he's uh, uh, well and truly ready. Are you open to it? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ken. Craig, <laughs> um, it's been a pretty chaotic day, obviously, in the April world, but you must be breathing a sigh of relief. At least you're going to unaffected all week. Yeah, it's only one week. It's back to one week at a time, isn't it, I think. Um, who knows what will happen after that. So. Uh, yeah, it's good to have some um, some uh, certainty about what's going to happen this weekend. But uh, next week will, will be another matter. But we'll just take you know you're just going to take every week as it comes. It's just the way it is. We we got used to that last year, and to some degree we we we're still having that. You know we learnt that lesson um, playing down in Geelong in round two. And suddenly we were in Melbourne for two and a half more weeks. So uh, um, it's just the way the world is at the moment. And we just have to. Adapt when those things happen. Have your players gone back into some sort of isolation or anything like that? So, I mean, last year, even though it wasn't affected here, we had to follow mm. the same rules everywhere for consistency. Yeah, I don't know that that's been passed on to our club at the moment. Um, uh, it's certainly the case for the for the Melbourne clubs, um, uh, but I think there would have to be cases up here for that to occur at our club, unless the, the AFL decide otherwise. But at the moment, we're just living normally. How much do you think you can draw on the experiences of last year and everyone sort of having that experience in terms of how you respond? And is there an attitude of like people just willing to do whatever based on what happened last year? It's hard to know. I think it'd be different for different people. There'd be some people would be like that, and there'd be some people would be going, oh no, not this again. This was pretty hard. Um, and it's a little bit different this year, isn't it? Because we've already played 10 weeks of a season, and to some degree, the, the season's panning out for teams. So. Uh, I dare say those who, who you know, if it, if it continues to go down this pathway, those teams that are alive and a chance to play finals might find an interrupted season more palatable than, a te than teams that are maybe struggling already. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how all that pans out. We certainly learnt a lot about how to deal with that situation last year, but you know, this year's a little bit different again. Which one are you? Are you happy, happy that it's a bit of interruption? You said the teams are doing well. Um, oh no, because I think we, we went into this season knowing that that could happen at any stage. So I think you just, whatever bobs up, you deal with it at the time and try not to let it affect you. I think that's the attitude of our players. That's how, how we were last year. We were, we were a bit fortunate last year in, in a sense that we played, you know, most of our football up here in Queensland. So we were not as affected as some other clubs. We had a small um, experience down in Sydney for two or three weeks, but um, uh, no, I'll just we'll just take it in our stride. Don't have any sort of preconceived ideas about what it may or may not be like. Would you welcome it if the, the league moved to Queensland again, and you know another chance to have a grand final at the Gabba? Oh, not really. Like I, I hope for, for all of Australia that everyone can live somewhere um, something like a normal life. So. Uh, you know, I think Melbourne's had more than their fair share of trials and tribulations over the last 12 months, and I'd hate to think that they have to go into, you know, another extended period of, of lockdown. So, 
for me, I'd take the All-Australian view and wish everybody well and hope that we don't get interrupted too much. Very different. Yeah. How, um, do you, how do you play it for Yeah, I don't. I don't think they'll have too many changes from last week. I know they lost uh, Taylor, uh, but I suspect that would be the only change. So uh, we're, no, we're pretty well across the Giants. We've had some good battles with them over the last few years, including that uh, close final up here the last time we played at the Gabba. So uh, um, no, we're aware of how well they're going, uh, and they're doing a tremendous job. Um, with all the injuries to, to really high profile players that they've, they've got and you know they've managed in the last few weeks to win enough games to force their way back into the eight so it tells you a lot about the depth of their their talent and not just the depth of their talent but their, the courage of their group and, and their tenacity and resilience I think so um, you know the, the games we play against the Giants in the last two or three years have been very very hard games of football and we're expecting exactly the same sort of grind on the weekend. No, I don't think we'll make any changes. So uh, um, uh, we do have Noah Answorth returning, playing in the in the reserves. Um, Jared Berry looks like he's improved a bit this week, so there's good hope for for post the buy. Lockie Neal's been running around a fair bit and trying to make it stake his claims for for next week. So we've got a few that are on the mend that are getting close, but um, we feel that the group that uh, played last week did a good job and. We'll continue with them. You did say last week that the back line, you were happy to take a smaller back line because which they match up well with Richmond. So you're confident that they match up well with the Giants as well? Oh, no, I think the Giants probably have a bit of a bit of a height advantage. Um, um, so we're aware of that, but we felt like they combined so well together and they work together well. It's not just about player v player, it's about how your system works. So um, we'll back our system in. Like there's been a bit of chat around for Danaher's goal kicking. Is that an overreaction given how well he's fitted in? Uh, there's been chats about Joe Danaher's goal kicking for ever since he played AFL football. So I think every year that he plays, there'll be chats about it. He, he misses the odd set shot just like everybody else does. Um, but it seems to get uh, highlighted. Um, I, I sort of looked at last week's game and saw that Joe Danaher had 11 score involvements uh, and played a pretty good game. So I was a little bit less worried about, about that than his goal kicking. It's something that he is constantly working on and trying to get better at, as are all of our forwards, which are, and probably as are all the forwards in the AFL. So um, they don't miss on purpose, um, and it's a work in progress for him. You just let him figure out his own routine, or do you does anyone chat to him about it because he's sort of gone around the corner, drop punts? Yeah, um, I, I chat to him about it, no, not for very long. He has a short chat. Um, you know, I think all players have to find their own way that suits them. That's that's what work what works best for them under pressure. So, uh, you know, he might have, might have been a little bit nervous about kicking around the corner because I hadn't actually talked to him about it. And I did say to him this week, um, Joey, if you're more comfortable kicking around the corner, then I'm I'm fine with that, mate. Uh, that's what makes you more accurate. So, uh, you know, he hasn't been with us for that long. We keep learning him about him, and he keeps learning about us. Chris, the way he sort of, you know, settled in and the way he works like all over the park, has that sort of, you know, surprised you? Was that, you know, like, like um, sort of, did, uh, sorry, did you know that that was going to be, the, you know, the case uh, with him? No, I always knew that he could do that. Um, uh, and we were very hopeful that he could become our second ruck uh, as well. So, uh, you know, I, I know the Danaher family well and, and know his dad and I know they feel like, he plays his best footy when he can play a bit forward and a bit in the ruck and, and get involved in the game because he's a very good all-round player. He's not just a forward. So uh, we're, try to, we're trying to use all these talents, which is working quite well for us at the moment. Was anyone at the ground on Tuesday could help smile when Ham started to run and it was a guard of honour he ran through? What was your feeling? Ah, no, just a bit of a smile on the face. It's, it's one of those milestone moments again, isn't it, when you have a big injury like that and... Uh, you get to run again, um, but no, just just pleased for him, and not surprised that the group reacted in that manner because he is a he is a popular lad. Uh, I did say to him, "That's the fastest I've seen him run in four years." But um, <laughs> after, I oh, was just joking. But, um, no, it was great to see.